Got Your Back Podstream is brought to you by Kinprint. For all your company's promotional needs, they do it all. Apparel, promotional products, using the highest quality brands. They do logo design, signage, and printing. Kinprint will promote your brand with excellence. Visit kinprint.ca. Happy Thursday night to you, and welcome to Got Your Back Live Post Game Edition. Oilers with a 4 1 win over the Los Angeles Kings, and an absolutely heroic, brave performance tonight from Rob Brown, who's toughing it out to do his job off the disabled list onto the podcast. Brownie standing by along with Jason Strudwick. We're going to break this win over the LA Kings down. Coming at you from our Long Shot studio out here in Sherwood Park. All game days are all day happy hour specials. $5 Long Shots Lager. Yes, that is $5 Long Shots Lager. Great golf, great food, and $5 Long Shots Lager on game days. As always, our show is proudly presented by our good friends over at Sherwood Buick GMC. Uh, the final days are in here. They're trying to hit that 400 number. So if you've been thinking about a vehicle, just off Baseline Road on the way into Sherwood Park, go see Phil, the great crew over at Sherwood Buick GMC. There's a reason why they're the number one volume GMC dealership in the country, right? They do deals. So head on down there and make a deal. New, used, whatever you need. Tell them that Got Your Back sent you. And uh, you'll have a great buying experience at Sherwood View at GMC. As we welcome the gentleman to the podcast tonight, Brownie. Happy to have you back, bud. How are you doing? How are you feeling, oh, yeah. fella? How are you doing, little hey, guy? You know what? It's, it's been tough. It's been tough. You know, I, I rented uh, the ambulance to take me to and from Rogers today. I got the <laughs> IV in. But I, 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 I watched you guys the other night, and I look, I look at you and Strides. I go, Shoggy? Looks like Leon did a couple of years ago when he had no teammates, no line mates to play with. I said, I got to get back. I got to get back. Poor Shoggy's playing by himself. It was almost like you guys were shorthanded. So here I am tonight to give you a little bit of uh, insight because it's been a couple couple days in a row where you've had to go with just you and Strud, and that's not fair to you. Brownie, I've seen more resilience slash grit from <laughs> butter melting in the sun than what I've seen from you. <laughs> It is. Oh, you got you got a sniffles. You got the sniffles. I get the sniffles all the time. I'm not taking weeks off. Reed Wilkins is that your like black, Godfather? I got the black plague. I got the black plague. Oh, like it's unbelievable. So unbelievable. On my deathbed, Zub- got right off my deathbed to be here tonight. Zuby Hop. If in I have here. to take a timeout, if I have to take a timeout to put my oxygen mask on a couple to- times, I'm gonna do it. But <laughs> I'm here for you guys. <laughs> So, Zuby, Zuby, how many nights have you played Hurt this year on the podcast? You basically have had a cold since the... By the way, I'm worried about you. But you basically had a cold since the start of the podcast season. And I don't know you've missed a single one for being sick yet. Agreed. I, I haven't missed any for being sick. I've missed other stuff for being sick. But this this is two ranks up too high. I missed my kid's Christmas concert. No, that's not true. But I, oh. it, it's <laughs> it's a high priority. And uh, yeah, I don't know. You just sometimes you got to fight through. But I got all I got to do is come down here to my cozy basement and cuddle up with a blanket and uh, try to stay alive for for seventy five minutes. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I mean, in fairness, Brownie had to do a lot more talking the other night than than you would have. But Struds, is there any sympathy? Like. You, you, I've noticed there's very little tolerance or sympathy for illness. Now, is that the, what your kids experience? Is that what your wife experiences? Like, is there any sort of, do you, do you take care of people when they're sick? Do you, do you help out or do you just sit there and tell them to toughen up? What's been my reaction to you when you've got the gout or the sore back or uh, <laughs> I, 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 a nail clipped too short? Anyone in my sphere of influence, I have zero tolerance for those types of things. Now, a, a legit medical issue. I'm, I'm right there. I'm there to support you. But people get the, the soft, the, like brownie. Go to bed before ten o'clock one night. Maybe you'll feel better. <laughs> like you, what's your place? The, the Gracie's Reigns, or whatever it's called, or Gracie's Gra- House. Gracie James. Oh, Gracie James. Gracie James. Gotta yeah. go I, for I a beer or two after a game at Gracie's. <laughs> I, I get all no, the time. I, I saw I your buddy brownie. I, 
<laughs> well, it's true. I'm there a bit. I tried coming on the other night, and I started trying to talk. And oh, Shoggy's man. looking at me because he's looking at me through the video. And I go, I, I can barely get voice. My voice keeps cracking. And I'm like, what do you want me to do, Shoggy? And he's like, whatever's best for you. You're a professional. But I could see that pain in his face. Like, please don't be on the show tonight because you're <laughs> going to you ruin it. No, 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 but it yeah. would have been hysterical and really fun had you done the show. So no, I was, <laughs> I was kind. Of, that was a test. I was giving you a test. I was like, I've been kind of wondering about you lately, your commitment to the show, and so I decided to sort of lay a little, little subtle test out there, and you failed it miserably. You could not have hopped off faster than you did the other night. But well, Brownie, but we're, we're, it was, we're it happy was still, about. it was still two for, it was still two for one at Gracie Jane. So I got there in just in time to get my last two beers. <laughs> uh got your back podcast i'm sticking up for brownie if this is still the intro let's talk how stoffer crushed struds fashion wise on tv tonight oh the birthday boy getting a little love bobby stoffer i thought you were looking pretty good struds i will say yeah. this the and you and like you shopped at mr dirk for that sure. i do believe that that's a little bit casual like that's from their casual wear section and you're trying to wear it as a suit coat on TV, and I'm not a thousand percent sure. Is that Brownie? Did you? Am I on an island there? Well, actually, I did get a uh, picture sent to me from my brother, and he did say Strud is looking pretty sharp beside oh. Bob. But now that I look at, I do look at it. It is, it is quite casual. But Strud, you could pull it off. Like you, you do look really good in this picture. I I give you credit. Yeah, I mean, I heard what you didn't say anything. Heard you didn't say anything intelligent, but you do look really, really good. That's not the goal. I'm the sex, the sexy <laughs> guy up there on that panel. But yeah. honestly, guys, when you like, do you remember what Taylor Swift wore to the Junos or to sorry to the uh, Grammys? Do you guys remember what it was? No, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. She was there. So the same thing for me. I am. That's what we're looking at. We're not worried about what I'm wearing. If you're worried about what you're wearing, it means you're ugly. <laughs> out for a nice dinner, you know, out for an evening with friends. I think that is more what that is designed for because it's a nice piece. I, I was with you when you got it at Mr. Dirk. By the way, let's just get to our breakdown. Enough of this fashion stuff, but it happens to be brought to you by Mr. Dirk, the iconic men's clothing store founded in 1939. They have everything you need for every aspect of your wardrobe, right? So if you want to dress up and put on like a suit, like the other grown-up struds, they have that for you. <laughs> but if you want casual wear struds, they have that as well. And you know that because you were wearing more casual wear tonight. Uh, basically, whatever you need, Mr. Dirk can square you away. Shoes, pants, shirts, whatever you need. Beautiful showroom. Highly recommend you go see Sterling, Dan, and the wonderful crew. MrDirk.com is the website. Okay, Struds, what did you like about the Edmonton Oilers tonight? Patience. They had patience. The, the, the Kings are a frustrating team to play against. They wait for you in the neutral zone, and then in their D zone, they really they, they kind of just cover the middle of the ice, and, and the Oilers were patient. And that's the style of game that has worked and will continue to work against uh, the, the style of game that the Kings play, which I actually would find quite boring to play. Brownie? Yeah, I, I, I agree that they, they were very patient. I, I think their attention to detail was very good in this game. Mm -hmm. I think that the Oilers, uh, better defensively, they didn't give up big chances against. Uh, they, whatever the Kings got, they had to earn. And I think in, even in, when they were dominating Ottawa, they still made big mistakes. Even against Winnipeg the other night, big mistakes, breakaways. Against the Kings tonight, they didn't do that. They played a very patient, detailed game and eventually waited for their chances. And when they got their chances, they capitalized. So I thought it was a very professional game by the Oilers. So I don't know if you guys will agree where I'm putting this in terms of the order of operations here, what we're talking about. But I think one of the more positive things that came out of tonight, and not that he hasn't been good lately, I loved Stuart Skinner's game tonight. I loved his battle level. I loved him bouncing back from that injury. I thought he made some excellent saves, some difficult saves, some timely saves. Stuart Skinner looked like 
a high-end playoff caliber goaltender tonight to me, Struds. And again, not that he doesn't look good on other nights, but tonight I thought he took his game to a different level if goalies can do that. I was wondering when the pendulum swim back for you two guys to talk about the goaltenders. It's been a while since we've had this uh, goaltender uh, acknowledgement of how great they are, and he did play a good game. But there would be other players above him on my nightly uh, kind of recap, not so much because that Skinner didn't play well, but because I thought these guys kind of reclaimed some of what their game should be like. For sure, but but good? You're saying his game tonight was just good and well yeah he played really well like there, there's no doubt about it I, I think that but that I've come to expect that from Stu right I, I think that he what he tonight he looked very poised very calm um you know economic in his movement like those are all things and details I like as a as a d-man having behind me so yeah he played a really good game <laughs> Uh, but that's where I'm expecting it. And he's I know that Brownie... He's capping it good, Brownie. He, he can't get past good, no matter how hard he tries. He, he, that's, it's the word. He tried spitting a different word out there. He couldn't get one. You know what I liked about Stuart Skinner? So the Oilers, it's 3 nothing. The LA Kings at that point uh, look dead. It, 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 there's no way they're going to come back. But they get they get the goal. They at home fans on or the puck bounces. They get the goal. Right after that, they had a shift. And it was a cross-ice pass from the point. I think it was Dowdy to Mikey Anderson. And it was a big one-timer with bodies in front of the net. And he the reached glove? back with his yeah. glove. That was a fantastic save. If that goes in, all of a sudden it's 3-2. The Oilers have blown leads in their last two hockey games in the third period. The Kings would have had life. That was a big save at a big moment. Now, in a game that you win 4-1 and the Stars came out to play and the physicality was awesome, sometimes it gets overlooked. But that save right there was the save the Oilers needed at the right moment. And that's something that Stuart Skinner has been giving them more and more of this year. That's what they didn't get in the playoffs last year. But I think this is a much more confident Stuart Skinner this year going into the playoffs. I'm saying excellent. Strud says well and good. Brownie, what are you saying? <laughs> I thought he had an excellent game, 100%. He you're won. Ac- uh, you're the, an excellent the Oilers game. won the specialty teams. They yeah. won the specialty teams, and they won the goaltending battle. That usually wins your hockey game. Zuby, you're the goaltending uh, guru on the show. House League, men's league extraordinaire. What word would you use? Are you more on Struddy's side or our side performance-wise? Uh, the word I would use is confident. And I, and I okay. think Stuart Skinner's at his best when he's confident. And you know what I had? I ha- one time I had a defenseman say this to me. One time ever. Um he said to me, you like, he said to me after a game, he's like, you were just really, you were calm back there. And it made, it made everything we did easier. And those are, yeah. those are Stu's best games. Those are the words I would use calm yeah. and confident. Solid yeah, night from uh yeah. solid night, confident night, good night. Well, night, excellent night from Stuart Skinner <laughs> tonight. Uh, can we talk about the start struts? Cause this is something that I think the Oilers need to focus on before the playoffs start. They need to be a team that knows how to show up on time and get going early and dictate play. And we saw that tonight led by one guy in particular, you know, Vander Kane. Yeah, you stick on around this uh, issue. If you stick on around this issue as well, uh, it, when you're playing junior hockey, you might have had a pro career. Let's just be honest. The game started <laughs> when Evander King smashed into Drew Doughty. So we saw it previously against the Leafs. We saw Edmondson going after the, the, the Oilers' top players tonight, led by Evander Kane, uh, who had two massive hits. He had, uh, you know, Doughty had uh, was at England. We had uh, the Zot retaliation by McDavid. We saw Bouchard cross check a guy into the corner. Not sure why that wasn't a penalty, but they were the more physical team, especially on the bigger side. And that to me was really the story. We talked about the last podcast when Brownie was on the IR and he had a, a slight cough about how they have to get back to their bully <laughs> mentality. Well, tonight, led by 91, this is the story. That was excellent game by by Kane. I'm sure you two guys will downplay what I've said, but that's where they're at, Chuck and Brownie. Well, we won't downplay because you can do that yourselves. But I, I, <laughs> me, I get I get asked all the time, you know, what, what, how are the Oilers going to do when they play against the big teams? How are they going to do against Dallas or Winnipeg or Vegas? To me, the Oilers are the most physical team in the Western Conference. And I don't even think it's close. They're a team that hmm. got 
uh, they got Kane and Perry that that on their third line that are just dominant out there with physicality. Kane Kane intimidates. There's not one guy on the LA Kings that I looked at tonight that I would say, oh, he would intimidate a player on the Oilers. Not one guy. Kane's intimidating. Connor McDavid leads the charge physically, and he plays 23 minutes a night. He hits harder than any player on the Oilers. Leon Dreisaitl runs, guys. They got Nurse. They got Ekholm. This is this to me is the most physical team in the Western Conference. So what we saw tonight is what you should expect every night because they're capable of doing it. And the LA Kings, to me, are a, a smaller, speedy team compared to the Oilers, who are a bigger, stronger team. I liked uh, I liked the fact that Kane did that right out of the gate, helped the team get off to a good start. He targeted the right guy. I mean, that was a big, big hit. Strud's like. The Kings didn't really have much of an answer for that. I was like, when that happens, you look at their lineup and you're like, who's doing something about that? And you're going through their lineup and you're like, yeah, nobody's doing anything about that. And again, it's not necessarily always about fighting, but there wasn't a lot, uh, you know, to return serve on Evander Kane for that. And Kane just kind of, you know, skating around out there knowing that he's kind of the, he's the guy out there on a night like tonight. So he's bringing it physically. He's bringing confidence. And I would say he needed a night like this. Pierre Luc Dubois. Let me tell you PLDB, as I like to call me and my buddies in our group chat. Um, there was a moment where it was along the boards. I think it was the first period where they kind of got locked horns and Pierre Luc Dubois had a chance to stand up for not just himself, but for the team. And he chose a different exit, exit stage left back on the bench. Like at some point, you kind of got to stand up and you got to, you know, push back. So to me tonight, Kane set the tone for a possible first round matchup with Pierre-Luc Dubois, with Drew Doughty. Um, you know, you kind of go through that lineup. Blake Lazat, I like Blake a lot. And even when Connor ran him in the middle of the ice, it's like, hey, we're not going to take that. We're not going to take that tonight. So it's not all about, you know, beating the other team up. But you have to impose your will. And unlike what we saw against the Leafs, where they were chasing the physicality, tonight the orders led the physicality. And that makes a big difference against that team. I agree. I think the, I think the most physical player and the one with the most gamesmanship on the LA Kings is Victor Arvidsson, their smallest player. Yeah. He's the one that engages yeah. the most. Right. And I love him as a hockey player. But again, I don't find the LA Kings to be a physical hockey club. The Oilers are. Now, I think the if the Oilers right now, the, the playoff matchup, if it started today, the Oilers would be playing Vegas. Vegas mm -hmm. is in third right now. Vegas yeah. is a bigger team. They can play physical. Now, that would be a very physical match between those two teams. But if it's the Oilers and the Kings, the Kings are going to try to beat the Oilers with speed. They're not going to try to be physical against them because they, they can't match up. Let's get to the Weiss Johnson sound box, and uh, we will remind you that they're offering $200 off their Fantech HEPA filter system right now. Be proactive to keep the air in your home clean. If we have another forest fire season like last year's, you're going to really thank yourself for taking this action because the filtration system will take the smoke out of the air in your home and be especially helpful to those with respiratory issues. So contact them for this amazing deal by visiting weiss-johnson.com today. Ask Chris Knobloch about Evander Kane's play and the play of that line. But I also know in the second period, we were very strong in the second half of that period, and it uh, started with Evander Kane for check that uh, he was able to get the puck, and from there we just built momentum. And um, So anyways, I thought that line was very good, and I think uh, Evander was the best one on that line. Struds, you've talked about this before on the podcast. The big hits are what will make the highlight pack. They really are. But Evander Kane, when he is playing physical, drives possession for the Oilers. Did you see the one four check you went in on where he didn't really get there in time to tag? I think it was, uh, who was it? Uh, Spence, maybe? Uh, one of the D-men. And just the fact that he was on his horse on the four check, D-man coughed it up. Oilers ended up with the puck and probably ended in, you know, 25, 30 seconds of his own time after that. So when he's physical, it drives possession for this team. But I think tonight we have to separate the type of physicality. He is a mean physicality. Mm -hmm. Like he he was he went in there and ran Dowdy. That was not a nice hit. There are, you know, not a lot of players want to take that 
take that hit because I believe, and I, I, I didn't talk to Vander about it. I believe he was willing to take a two minute penalty to get that hard hit on Dowdy. I, I really feel it. Cause it was, you know, if, if that had happened on Connor McDavid, we, we'd be dealing with endless texts about how, how yeah. poorly that wasn't called. Um, so I think he went in there with the mentality of being mean and he doesn't care what the outcome is. And that's, that is truly when he's at his best, but you can't do that for 82 games. It just, you can't bring it. You cannot bring that type of game 82 times a year, but you know, in those big games, you can bring it, uh, you know, do you need it Saturday against the ducks? I don't want to give the guy a night off, but let's be honest here. You just that, did. Yeah, I, I guess I did. You know, but Brown <laughs> from a guy who's taking the night off Saturday already. Yeah. Rob Brown and Kane will both be sick on Saturday. No, just no. kidding. But it, it's just one of those situations where you're, you know, you you have to understand the moment and understand the type of game you're dealing with. And I think that for Vander, he does, he does get it, and he does make a huge difference for this team, Brown. Okay. Oh, Brownie, you got something else on Kane, or you want to move on? No, I, well, I disagree. I think there's so many games. If you watch when Kane's on his game, how often on the forecheck, D men throw the puck away the, mm. a second or two before they want to because they saw what he did to Doughty. So Doughty, who is uh, as good a defenseman as the National Hockey League has had in years and years and years, he's a fantastic defenseman. He waited to the right moment to make the play. He didn't bail out. But most players will bail out because they don't want to take the hit Doughty did. So even when Evander's on his game, he is an intimidating force on the forecheck. Yeah, hundred percent. He is uh, Leon Drysaitel. A couple of elements, uh, two questions. You can answer them both in one, Brownie. Did he do it on purpose? Did he bank it in off Henrique on purpose? And what did you think about his penalty? Okay, I'll start with the penalty first. It, 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 that was not not good. I mean. It, 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 I know it's a regular season game and it's a big moment team and you're trying the intimidation, but we saw that too often in the playoffs and they call it. He did it right in front of the referee. When the ref, the one thing a ref doesn't want you to do is don't embarrass me. Never embarrass me. If he just gave you a power play and then you slash the guy that's getting the penalty, that's embarrassing the referee. So yes, that was a, that was not, he should not have done that. He's got to get that out of his game. As for, uh, bouncing it off Henrique, I said on air tonight after the game, I believe Leon Dreisaitl tried to bounce it off his chest. I don't know if he's trying to bounce it off his chest and in, or if he's trying to bounce it off his chest to have it fall there, but Leon Dreisaitl is the best passer in the league, and by far the best backhand passer in the league. He hit Henrique in the chest from five feet away. I believe he did it on purpose, and it went in the net. Strudz. Uh, yeah, Leon Dreisaitl, you didn't even get 10 seconds worth on that penalty call. If you're going to take a two minute, absolutely stand up and just whack him. Take him down like a big tree. Not worth it. Not worth it in that moment. He's got to skate away. Um, I, I disagree with Brownie. I believe he wasn't trying to hit his right peck. He was trying to hit the left peck. So he's off by about four inches. <laughs> he's playing if, this. If that's Sean Brown going around the net and throws it up and hit him, that's just pure luck. When it's dry and subtle, I can't deny that I, I believe it's probably intentional. So what did Brownie do? <laughs> How's Sean Brown getting killed out of nowhere here? Oh, hands like I, I've seen his hands. Just like, <laughs> trust me. I was like, let him have the puck. We <laughs> want that guy shooting. We want that guy shooting. <laughs> um, I thought maybe he was trying to put it in the top corner over on the far side. He kind of extended his arms out, and I thought maybe he was. I, I we'll ask him if we get a get a chance to ask him in the next couple of days. So I'm not as convinced. And I'll, I'll take a different tact on the penalty, you guys. I I saw that happen, and I kind of went, eh. You know what? Slewfoots and the LA Kings and all that, that's, that's a bit of a sweet spot for him, and I'm okay with Leon. I mean, I, I agree, Struds. It would have been good if he took a bigger piece of the guy, but I was okay with Dry Saddle carving out a little bit of space for himself in, in that moment. You know, the Kings mucked up his leg pretty good. And I don't blame him for, you know, that frustration in that moment. I don't like the ones where you take a dumb penalty and put your team down. But when you've just eaten a slew foot and you're pissed with the history he's got against this team, eh, I, I wasn't as bothered by that as I have been by some of his other stuff. I don't think you can pick a I, Well, I, to me, yeah, yeah to me, it's if this is a playoff game, that would have been a dumb penalty. Sure. Yeah. Playoffs is a little play. different. Yeah. Playoffs. So, is and a here's the different. thing, though. There's, there's, and there's a history because he has done it in the playoffs. Yeah. So, 
I just get it out of your game. You don't need it because it. You know who the happiest person in the world was when you when he got slashed was Blake Lazat because <laughs> now he didn't yep. have to have that lonely skate back to the bench after getting scored on. So Blake Lazat, yeah, slash me again. Thank you. Make it worth your while. Just wind up and absolutely crush him. Yeah. It just it's, he didn't he didn't get. I don't know if he got six seconds worth of that penalty for that two minutes. It wasn't yeah. worth it. All right, time now for our You Can You Services Relentless Player of the Game. It is an Edmonton charity, relentless in helping youth age 16 to 24 get out of harm's way and get employment. YouCan.ca is the website and uh, got your back as a proud monthly donor. They just had wonderful, uh, eight wonderful nights of comedy. And uh, we did a few different auction items. And uh, Antonio um, and his group bid on a media tour at the rink today. So they came down to morning skate. It was one of the silent auction items came down to the morning skate to uh, him and uh, a few friends and got to watch the orders uh, take morning skate tour of the hall of fame room. And then a little bit uh, before the game, uh, got a chance to go upstairs. Uh, Zuby, you got the picture I sent you. There it is. Yeah, there it is. And a chance to meet the man, Gene Principe. Uh, now, they were told they had to exit set before Jason Strudwick was there, uh, but they got to meet the the real show on the Sportsnet set tonight. So a real cool media tour for uh, the crew. Gene was gracious with his time. And uh, once again, those comedy nights, just a great event for you, Ken, and we're happy to be partnered with them and do some silent auction items like that. Uh, Struds, who are we going with tonight, bud? Well, it's going to be kind of crazy, but I'm going to Vander Kane. I know that yeah, you guys yeah, all probably yeah. want Stuart Skinner, go. but uh, right from shift one, I thought he set the tone, and it was mean, engaged in Vander Kane tonight. And when he's on, he's he's such a huge part of this team, guys. Brownie, good 100%, choice. One hundred percent, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Vander Kane, uh, when he's playing like that, he he does set the tone, and I, I think also looking forward to the playoffs. I think you're starting to see how the lines are going to be set up. I think they like McLeod playing with Perry and Kane. That will be a line that teams do not want to line up against. They will come out against Kane like, oh, not these guys. And I think you saw that tonight, as Stride said about Dubois. He did not want to play against Evander Kane. Hmm. Interesting. So you think that Henrique will stick on Dreisaitl's left side on the second line, hey? I do. I absolutely do. He thinks the game like Leon. Yeah. And we haven't seen any chemistry with Kane and, and Dreisaitl this year. Kane looked much better and much more engaged tonight than we've seen him in a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a decent look for a couple of games in a row now. Okay, uh, lots more to come on the podcast. We're going to change up the order a little bit when we come back. We're going to go with Struddy's World so that Brownie can hang around for that. And then Strud's and I will break down the game a little bit more in our takeaways segment. And then we've got uh, Ask Us Anything, Take a Lap, plenty of show ahead, so stick around. Short break. The fastest growing male grooming company on the planet just got even better. Backscape 2.0 with a revolutionary friction fit handle makes the razor easy to pop in and out to shave not only your back, but anywhere on your body. And those hard to reach spots just got even easier with the new ergonomic design. Backscape's new titanium shave head makes for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Backscape 2.0. Stay smooth, gentlemen. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here, someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Guy look good. <laughs> oh, we got the tropical music tonight. You know why. This edition of Strutty's World brought to you by Shipwreck Rum. If you have not yet had the experience of this amazing flavored rum, blend it on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts. Do yourself a favor and grab a bottle today or tomorrow. The Brindley family has been crafting shipwreck and small batches for decades. Their spiced rum aged four years in bourbon barrels infused with natural vanilla. Get shipwreck fans available at your local liquor retailer. And as always, please enjoy responsibly. Brownie, we uh, changed the order up just so you could be part of your favorite segment. Struddy, go ahead and bring it. Just so you guys know, I had a little mango. Oh, yeah. Just, just to kind of dull the pain from a paper cut. 
I had earlier. Uh, oh, so obviously, uh, <laughs> just in honor of my buddy Rob Brown here. Um, but anyways, I'll carry on and try to fight through this injury. Uh, it's funny that Brownie just brought up that line of McLeod, Kane, and Perry because I believe against the Los Angeles Kings, they're the perfect line. Um, it's not really a track meet or a speedy game, especially when you're going on the offense. It's more of a tactical one where you have to make sure you place the puck um, you know, in behind their D, make them turn. You can go pick it up, and then it's kind of a grounded pound game. That it just it, it's it, the speed, and not to suggest those guys are slow, but the speed is a bit negated because they they're trying to slow you down. They're trying to make it really hard and make it like skating through mud to get into their zone. And once you get in there, then it's just like a regular grounded pound game that something those three guys, specifically the wingers, like to do. When you move, let, let's just assume the Oilers play the Kings in the first round. I'm going to assume in this exercise that they they win that. And then they go on to play a team like the Canucks that are a little bit quicker or Vegas, you know, I guess depends on what happens, but something like that. Would that still be the ideal line in that scenario playing against a much quicker team that doesn't employ uh, the one, three, one, or that, that type of kind of boring hockey. And I, I'm not convinced that it is now it could be changed as quickly by maybe moving Perry out and moving someone a little bit speeder on that line. Because I think Fogel set on that uh, beside Leon. I think he really likes playing there. But guys, I think that's you know you got this this group. I think that they have the depth and the pieces that you can move, kind of not just within you know the playoffs, but within series by series, and even at time game per game for a different look, for different types of styles you want to match up against other teams' line. But I like that line against the Kings. I'm not sure of what it'll look like against a real speedy line or speedier team, boys. Yeah, I agree, Struts. I, I thought they were fantastic tonight. And it's the, the LA Kings, they sit back and you have to dump the puck in and forecheck. And then that's what they're very good at. Perry's still got fantastic hands. He's got great hockey IQ. He puts the puck in the right area. I think they'd, he'd be, that line would be very good against LA. And I think that uh, Knobloch made sure to point out that that line was excellent tonight. I, I think that they do have depth this year. The trades that they made, as we've seen, only one of the three guys have been in the lineup, but they've given them depth and they've given them options. I think that line could play against Vegas because I think B Vegas is a bigger physical team. The Vancouver Canucks are a fast team. They're a skilled team. And maybe you switch Perry and Brown at that point and have a little more mm -hmm. speed with Connor Brown. But I do believe that if, if in the, the first round, the Oilers are either going to play Vegas or they're going to play L.A. And I think either one of those teams – I think the line of McLeod, Kane, and Perry could have a very positive impact. Yeah, I, I like your point about Connor Brown. And Struds, would that maybe be a preference for you against a certain opponent, sliding Connor Brown in there? Who, by the way, I think there's a little bit of a different confidence in his game recently that we've seen here. He seems to be making plays now that maybe he would have struggled with before. I'm not sure if it's just me or not. But would that be your choice, Brown uh, Struds? I think it would be. I do believe that would be the guy. I mean... Derek Ryan, I guess, would be an option. You know, would you mm. put Sam Carrick in there? I'm not. I'm not sure that's really where you want him. You want him more at the center position. Um, yeah, and Mark, I guess maybe on his off. Here's a name for you, Dylan no, Holloway. Don't say it. Don't say it. Raphael Lavoie. Maybe another guy. <laughs> Wasn't going to say that. Dylan yeah. Holloway. No. Yeah, you're right. But I, I and again, this isn't. I I, I want to be. I want to kind of just make sure I'm I'm careful with my comments. I believe that those three guys are going to have an impact in the playoffs for the Oilers, whether oh, yeah. they're together or separated. But I, I think the point of what I'm trying to say is that the Oilers have different looks and control different looks at different teams for for what for what they're that they, they they need or require, and it's going to change. I don't think what we see game one of series one is going to be the same lines we see in game two of you know or game one of series two. Now uh, injuries obviously play a part in that, but. I like that they can have different looks, and I think it's important to have different looks to different lines. All right. That was Struddy's World. Bro oh, yeah. Brownie, finishing thought on that? I, no, I agree with that. Uh, two things I just want to say before you kick me off the show tonight. One, I, I agree with what you said about Connor Brown. The play he made shorthanded to Yanmark, that was a fantastic play. Yanmark almost tipped it past Talbot. That's yep. a confident player. So and two, good. this is something you guys can chew on. Have you guys... Did anyone else find it odd that Zach Hyman wasn't out in the last three minutes of the game when they pulled their goalie? Yeah. That Yanmark twice yeah. came out with Connor and Leon. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, uh, notable and and some thought about. I'm not sure if he was injured or if there was something going on there. Um, did not ask put a the point coach about that? it after the game. What's that? I, I think what they're. I, I think that he's trying to give Yanmark a, a chance to be out there in those moments and kind of grow in those moments. Like I, I think he you got to give guys chances in different moments to try to 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 feel good about their game and 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 can Yanmark do it? Right. Let's say something happens to, to Hyman. Can he do it? So I'm I'm. I'm not pushing away he doesn't have an injury, but I, I just think you got to find different guys that can contribute at different moments. Yeah, good point. I wonder what it was. Um, and maybe if I get a chance, I'll uh, ask the coach in the next couple of days. Um, sometimes if you ask little questions like that off camera, they'll give you a little bit of insight. But uh, All right, that was Struddy's World, brought to you by Brindley Shipwreck Rum. Brownie, get to bed, man. Get some sleep. Get yourself square. We need you to 100% for the weekend because Struddy, Struddy's not going to be available Saturday. So it's just going to be you and me, and you're going to have to do the whole show. And that's a marathon compared to this two-segment stuff you do now. I can hardly wait. I, I just, I'm just i eager for the opportunity to do what Struds does, <laughs> whatever that is. I make it look easy. That's the problem. All you make it look stuff. something. <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, Brody, Brody, have a good night, buddy. Angelo, Justin Timberlake. Good night. Uh, our takeaways are coming up after this break. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top of the line track man simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z.ca. Time to talk about your mortgage? It doesn't have to be a daunting conversation. With over 16 years in the industry, Maria Gallus with Maximal Mortgages knows how to make it easy. With access to dozens of different lenders, let Maria customize the perfect solution for you. Whether you're purchasing, refinancing or renewing, or a first-time buyer, Maria's simplistic approach and expert advice will have you feeling confident you're in great hands making informed decisions. Take the stress out of your mortgage journey. Contact Maria Gallus at mortgagesbymaria.ca. That's mortgagesbymaria.ca. Time now for our takeaways brought to you by Martin Motorsports. Spring is here. Oh, it, it's, it's so close. It's the perfect time to get ready for your summer adventures. Visit Martin Motorsports to find the perfect boat. For you and your family, surf boats, pontoon boats, fishing boats, sea dews, and sea dew switches, plus all the water sports gear you could possibly need. Visit them in store or online, martinmotorsports.ca, to view their boat inventory and all that they have to offer. Oh, I'm excited. Getting to be that time of year again. You can start thinking about some of this spring stuff. A little golf. Can't wait. Uh, Struds, it's a little mucky when you play the LA Kings, you know, and, and I don't know if you heard it the other night, Nikita Zadorov was talking about how, I mean, they're taking a lot of criticism for this one, three, one that they play and Zadorov <laughs> ripped into him for it. And then the coach is answering questions and Drew Doughty's answering questions and almost as if they have something to apologize for, which they absolutely don't. But I, I will submit this to you. They're pretty committed to this system. It's a pretty specific way of playing the game, and it's very noticeable out there. But they haven't won a whole lot with it, and the Oilers have a lot of success against it. So is the 1-3-1 the way for the Kings to go if they end up in a playoff series against the Oilers, you think? Well, this I guess this is the question that I have. They made a mid-season coaching change. How often does a coach make this dramatic of, or would he make that dramatic of a change going away from – a very mucky style of play to something way more aggressive. It's Hiller, right? Jim Hiller. Like, could yeah. Jim, ha, have we ever seen a coach come in and say, this is all wrong. We're changing everything and go do this. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know Change if that course. happened. So I guess the question is, assuming he's a coach day one next year, is this team a four checking more aggressively? Because th this is the problem with this type of way. It's a very type of way of playing. It's a very counter punching style. It's not very aggressive. You're not putting a lot of pressure on another team. The pressure you're putting on them 
is to not make mistakes so you can go counter punch on them, right? That's that's what you're doing. When you play a more up uh, up tempo style of play, you're 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 forcing the other teams D or forwards to cough it up, and that can be that can break their will. This this frustrates teams more than than breaking their will. I mean, the orders are comfortable in this game now. They very much are. Like, it was a soupy game tonight. Look at the shots on net. Yeah. Evan Tillers had 20 shots on net, right? LA Kings were a shot volume team. They had 33. The orders are comfortable. Mm -hmm. They know what it looks like. They know how to pick it apart. They know how to pick their spots. They know, you know, they've you can tell they've got different different breakouts and different things that they know. You know, here's what we do now. And I just feel that they've become experts in picking this thing apart. And they've done it multiple years in a row here. So interesting for the LA Kings. It might be a very good system to take down a lot of other teams in the league. It truly might. Uh, I And I don't pretend to be a systems expert, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. in every detail of the game. But I do wonder if it's the right system to try and play against this group. Yeah, I... <laughs> I'd like to see the shackles come off some of these guys. Let me yeah. see Pierre Luc Dubois get going on the four check. Let me see who I think was, if not the best king, one of the best one, Quinton Byfield. I want to see this guy take the shackles off a 6'5, 220 pound, pound forward. They Byfield go unleashed. Yeah, let him go. Let him go. Like Deneau's smart enough. Kobotar's smart enough. Uh, you know, Artfordson can, can play his style. So that's six. I've already, I think that's six forwards, five or six I've named off already. And then you got Trevor Moore, who's also a smart player. You got Kemp, who's also very smart. So I'm at like six, seven guys. Do you not think those guys can handle this style of game? Get up the ice and play hard and forecheck? Like, I just, it's not fun. I've played it. It's not fun to play this style of hockey. And at some point, it's got to get old. But I, again, I go back to my original question. Would it, how crazy would it be for a coach to come in and completely change what a team's done with their previous coach midseason? I is, mean, is it going crazy? back, if you're going back to things they're more familiar with, I don't know that it would be, a, you know, something a little bit more traditional and something that's played a little more often that these guys would have had quite a bit of experience with over the years. Uh, maybe it wouldn't be completely crazy to do it. I mean, I remember Mac T, the year the Oilers went on that run. I remember we were covering a practice before, I think it was a Detroit series, and we were looking and we were like, what are they doing? Like, what what are they doing? They made a significant systems change right at the start. And well, next time we have Mac on, we'll ask him about this. Yeah. Right at the start of the playoffs, they made a significant change. And it was based on it being a better fit against Detroit. And it ended up having big success with it. So I don't think it's impossible. Yeah. So you're talking about, yeah, like I'm guessing maybe it went to something like a left wing lock or whatever the case, you know, whatever you did. I, I get it. But this is a fundamental, you still have your normal four check against other teams like this i'm talking about a seismic change in the way your team plays yeah. i'm not sure how easy that is to do yeah and that's a fair point by you uh if if we lived in a world where when the playoffs began you could choose your opponent who would the edmonton Oilers choose between la and and uh vegas right now do you think who do you think that well, I who think would you probably, pick for them they'd probably play the choose the kings I would love to see the, the the Vegas. Like, you know, I think my good friend Rick Flair said it best. To be the man, you got to beat the man. And uh, I, I think you that's take Colorado, though. That's... Yeah, but I think they're the defending Stanley Cup champions, right? Like yeah. Vegas knocked the orders out last year. Like, I think yeah. you got to take that guy down. And then, because you're not getting Colorado to a, the, at least the third round. Um, so I think you gotta, you gotta own the Pacific before you can go out and try to take on somebody else. The point I would make about Vegas is this, as order fans are watching the, the standings and as of tonight, it would be Vegas. I think there's a chance Vegas will be healthier for the second round than they are for the first round. You yeah, might want to get them early, right? This stone thing, this, you might want to get them early while you're yeah. healthy too. Yeah, no, that, that's a fair point because Aiden Hill also, I think he's nicked up. Yeah. You got Hurdle Stone and Aiden Hill, who are all pretty important pieces of, of your group. Um, well, pretty important, I'd say. That'd be an understatement. <laughs> well, we'll ask the stream. Who are you hoping for in the first round? Would you rather have it be the Vegas Golden Knights and defending champions or the Los Angeles Kings? And in our Ask Us Anything segment, maybe we can get a little bit. Of... Actually, Zuby, why don't you throw up a poll on that? 
Let's throw up a poll. We'll ask. I'm on, I'm on it. I'm on it. You got You're it. on it, buddy. I, I love it. I mean, you're always all over it. Uh, Struds, let's get back to the physical aspect real quick here. There's just a little bit more of the conversation I want to finish off. So, you know, Brownie thinks they're one of the most physical teams in the conference. Uh, it comes and goes from their game, but that's an 82 game schedule. That's going to happen a little bit. It got way too far away from them in the Toronto game but they've kind of rebounded nicely here the last few games as they kind of they try and round their game into form and maybe wake some parts of their game up a little bit. And I see a team that, you know, was maybe challenged a little bit and is making more of an effort to wake that part of their game up. Yeah, and I agree with that. And I, I, it is hard to do it every night. I think people mm-hmm. have to understand that. It's and Oh, they're professionals. I get it. But, I mean, it's still difficult to bring it. Well, what you need is you need, you know, you need to start to feel what it looks like and how it feels when you're doing it night in, night out. And then more importantly is you get buy-in from everybody. So tonight we could go through the lineup and let's look at some of the guys. Bouchard, he had some physical moments. Uh, obviously Kane, uh, Connor, Leon had some physical moments. Uh, like when I'm talking pure hits. Yep. Uh, Nurse had some physical moments. So you're, you're starting to get into that five, six player range. And then other guys can kind of jump in and, and make it happen as well. Corey Perry's always irritating. Um, you know, so you're 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 adding that even Ryan McLeod, I saw a couple of times he knocked in someone. So you want to keep just adding more and more guys onto that hit train or hit parade, not to run out of position, but to finish checks so you slowly wear another team down. Braun Solo says Vegas for revenge. So uh wanting to see a first round matchup between Vegas. And the orders. I, I asked Corey Perry about the Logan Stanley fight. Not just that, but about the way that the orders responded in that game against Winnipeg. If they maybe had heard some of the noise and some of the criticism coming out of that Toronto game, and if maybe that had a little bit to do with why they brought what they brought. So uh, let's hear from Corey Perry on that topic. Hold on. Sorry, one second. I got it. Here oh, that's he is. okay, buddy. Here he is. I mean, listen, we we definitely heard about what ha- you know everybody talking about it and in, in that Toronto game and um, and yeah, you you look back and you, you do see the the extra cross checks, the uh, the pushes, the shoves, the whatever, the extra attention that that those couple guys got and um, you know that uh, at the end of the day that can't really happen and um, you know it, it, for me to go out there and, and fight Logan Stanley, that's not what it was about. It was about that moment, that game, and and where we were in that game, and um, but at the same time, you, we uh, we have to look in here too. That's him, and you know, make sure we do have that little pushback when things come to shove. They hear it, Struds. They know it, you know, and and they should know themselves too. But it was interesting that he said he heard a lot of what was being said after the outside noise. Yeah, and I I, I would be surprised if they didn't know it when it came off the ice. Like you know. You know, I don't need the fans or the media or whatever, like Twitter, to tell me that I wasn't physical that night. Like, you know, especially when your counterpart on the other side is physical and they push around your top guys. So um, I think you, I think it's so important for the owners to set the tone physically when possible. And again, I'm not talking about blowing guys up and running across all over the place, but getting, I mean, it didn't hurt that Kane did that to Dowdy right away. I thought Dowdy was kind of quiet all night. But you need to yeah. bring that out right out, just right from get you be the instigator. Or it shouldn't be that. You be the person who leads the hitting parade rather than they doing it to you. The orders need a Vander Kane, man. I've been saying it for weeks and weeks and yeah. weeks and months. It's going to be up and down through the regular season. There's going to be some ebbs and flows. And we've definitely seen that. This player is so valuable, the skill set he can bring. And tonight was a night we sort of planted a flag and said, Yeah, you remember what I can do? And it's just a, it's it's almost time where this is going to matter a ton, and here it is, and so giving a little bit of a glimpse of that different that difference between yeah. him and everybody else. Not everybody can do what he can do, Struds, and he's a difference maker when he does it the way that he did it tonight. Uh, that was takeaways brought to you by Martin Motorsports. Struds and I are going to take a lap when we get back, and then ask us anything. We'll give you the results of our poll and take your questions as well. Commercial Zuby. 
Yeah, the wrong, here it is. The wrong one came up. Here we go. You in the crapper? What are you doing, bud? No, I'm good. I'm just, uh, I'm drifting off. <laughs> no, that. I got he it. The wrong one came out up. every here. once in a while during the show. He does. Never. Here we go. <laughs> Winter is upon us, so why not make the best of it? Marmot Basin Ski Resort is where it's at. Ski half price every day. No blackout periods. Pick up your escape card for 99 bucks and make winter fun more affordable. Half the price, all the powder. Get yours at www.skimarmot.com. All right, time to take a lap. Brought to you by Backscape, the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. And it's even better now. Backscape 2.0, there it is, engineered with a new friction fit handle that lets you effortlessly, effortlessly, I screw up that word every night, I have to change that script, there's nothing effortless about it, but the sna- the the shaver snaps in and out, and you can touch up the rest of your body with it as well, go to backscape.com, use the promo code GYB10 for 10% off the Deluxe 2.0 and Advanced Kits, that is Backscape, B-A-K-Scape.com. Stay smooth, gentlemen. Stay smooth effortlessly. Strutty, Paul Maurice. Funny yeah, Paul, Paul Maurice tonight. Yeah, I like Paul Maurice. I, I've always liked him. Uh, Me too. Yeah, I, think, I think he's a good coach. Um, just kind of gets it, understands the relationship between the media and the, and the, and the fans and, and himself. Um, but today after the Panthers clinch a playoff spot in which a game they, they lost – um, Paul wasn't happy with, or didn't want to answer those types of questions. So he said, and I about quote, clinching. Paul, so he was clinching. asked about, about clinching, clinching specifically. Yeah. yeah. About clinching. And he says, um, today is free quote day, F and day. Take whatever you think I might say and use it. I won't bitch about it. So, uh, <laughs> his team clinches, but they didn't play well, which is kind of weird. They, you know, like there were some nice parts. I went back and looked at it. They had six penalties uh and they killed all the power mm-hmm. plays against the islanders yeah. uh, but they did lose three two so he wasn't happy they clinched but obviously not satisfied with their game you know what though bud like paul maurice he's been around a long time he and he's he's old school in some ways i think he's a coach that understands some of the best opportunities to be hard on your team come after wins you know he's That's done point. this before yeah and this is a good way for i mean you get the two points so everybody can feel okay about themselves but it's a lot different when a you know a coach has to come down heavy after a loss versus you know your team has won the game and it's it's just I, mm-hmm. it probably has a different feel to it. What do you think? Of, do you think he's thinking it on that level? Yeah, he he might be, but yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not going to put it past him. I mean, he he's a very wily coach, um, and I've heard other coaches do it. And I like that. I didn't understand yeah. when you just abuse a team when they're losing. We're already feeling badly, you know. Give it to a little bit more hard when we're when we're we're winning, or or have won a game. Um, but I do think that he just feels that he he you know the clock's ticking on his team as far as the end of the season. He wants to get them dialed in, exactly. Uh, and I think that's a big deal. And when you're a team as good as they've been all year, you know the coach. You almost have to manufacture some opportunities for. Yeah, some intensity to kind of, you know, to just ramp it up. You want to have right. something to be ramping it up. They're a good team, man. They're a legit cup contender. Fantastic team. Great roster. They've got just about everything you need. They could really go on a run here. And I like the fact that he's keeping it sharp and keeping it fresh and finding ways to keep his guys on their toes. What's next? Let's just talk about the Pacific Division. Uh, the yes. Wizards have a tough time getting out of it. While well, Vegas wins today, 4-1, I believe it was. Um, and obviously the Kings lost to the Oilers. So now the Vegas have slipped ahead of, of um, the Kings in the playoff spot positioning. So they're now third uh, in the uh, Pacific Division. So that means mm-hmm. the Mighty Oil would be taken on those guys. And then the, the Knights or the Kings drop down below Nashville, who have 90 points, and, and the Kings have 87. So pretty big drop for uh, the Kings. But I, I suppose... Um, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. The Kings will be playing the Stars if the playoffs started tomorrow. Can we start talking about, I mean, I understand why you're looking at that portion of the standings, and it's very relevant. But what if you were to, like, take a look up for a minute, Struds? Because the Vancouver Canucks, I think, have lost two in a row now. Yeah. They're at 98 points. The Oilers are at 92. So there's six points between them. 
the Oilers have two games in hand and a game against the Canucks. We talked about this like three weeks ago, and the math was difficult. But what do you think of that math? And again, Vancouver has a lot of home games, and I think they have the more favorable schedule, less travel. The Oilers spend more time on the road. But is there reason to be looking up in the standings instead of down? Um, I, I think, yeah, I think it's I think it's possible to look up. I think that's fine. But you know, if I'm the Oilers, I'm I'm not unhappy with where I'm at. You know, especially mm-hmm. when you think you started the season, you're second in the Pacific. I think that for them, it's about getting their game right more than chasing down the Canucks. Yeah. Well, but that, they they go hand in hand, though, right? I mean, they they absolutely go hand in hand. And I oh, guess sure. yeah. I'm not saying that it needs to be their focus or what they talk about, but do you see it being realistic for them to get them? I mean, the Oilers play the Ducks on Saturday. Who who did Canucks play? Yeah. Let me look it up quick. Um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and grab their schedule. And so, so even that, it's that it's it's that tight. Like it connect the like they lost to the Dallas Stars. So the okay, Oilers so are about actually, to head on on a road trip, right? So the Oilers have the Blues, the Stars. They got the Avalanche. They got the Flames. Yeah. Like they're heading out on a, a pretty good road trip here. And so this, then they got so, Vegas, Arizona, so, Vancouver, San Jose, uh, Arizona, and Colorado left. So a couple games against Colorado still as yeah. well. So the Ducks are in Vancouver Sunday after the Oilers hopefully maul them Saturday. And then Canucks go on the road against the Vegas, Arizona, who are playing not bad, and the Kings. Those are their next kind of four mm. games. So, you know, it's it's – I don't know. It wouldn't be my focus. My focus is on playing well. And if it, it's a byproduct of what I, I've played well, then yeah, that's great. I, it's not impossible and, and definitely improvement from where they were to start the year. Jason Strudwick's appearance on the podcast brought to you by Kin Print, high quality apparel and promotional products to take your brand to the next level. Check out all that they have to offer on their website. That is kinprint.ca. When we come back, the results of the poll, who would you rather have? The LA Kings or the Vegas Golden Knights in round one of the postseason. And Zuby will hop back in for Ask Us Anything. We'll take some of your comments. Stay with us. For over 60 years, Belvedere Golf and Country Club has been delivering a high-quality golf experience to Edmonton and area. This beautiful private club located on Highway 21 just south of Sherwood Park occupies 160 acres and presents a challenging yet adventurous 18-hole design. A beautiful clubhouse, fully stocked pro shop, and warm, friendly staff truly make it feel like you belong to something unique and special. Visit www.belvederegcc.com. We would be remiss tonight, Strugs, if we didn't send a big birthday shout out to the big guy who was on the set with you tonight. (laughs) Happy birthday! Bob Stoffer. Yeah, the big man birthday. Apparently, he loves the ice cream cake. Uh, he and I have an in-depth discussion about it. So I hope you got some ice cream cake tonight, big guy. Yeah, he was all smiles tonight. I had a chance to uh to meet his family as well. They were down there. They had t-shirts made with pictures of a young Bob oh, on geez. their t-shirts. His daughter Tori, she showed me she did like a picture of her dad when he was. I mean, it, it had to be. 25 years ago or more. Bob was actually pretty svelte back in the day, Strutty. I, I, he'll be the first to tell you, but he actually was. Yeah, he's he's a real personality, that guy. I, I Every time I see him, I get another layer of him. So I listen to his show. I think the odd time he tunes into us. Who knows? Maybe someday the worlds can collide and we can uh, have Bob on the pod we'll see we'll see we can uh, we can hope we'll, we'll continue to work towards that time for ask us anything brought to you by match eatery and public house if you're a fan of chicken wings and who isn't really hop on over to match public uh match pub ice district and tackle their five amped plates of wings featuring flavors such as what's the deal yo i like that one spicy mango tango and nashville hot not your average wings Match course located just uh, right adjacent to Rogers Place in the Grand Villa Casino. For more information, check out matchpub.com. Zuby, you want to do the poll first? Where'd we, where'd we land on that bad boy? Oh, yeah. I'm in vacation mode. I haven't stopped it yet. So let's, but I know. <laughs> okay. Let's end. Welcome okay. Back, we can. Bud. How was your time off? 
Oh, it was, it was very nice. It was, we had lots of fun out on the coast, took the kids out to do some stuff. I mean, we lived there. They, my kids were born there, but they are too young to remember that they did stuff there. So we did the, uh, we went to the zoo. Nice. We went to the, uh, we went to science world, uh, some of our old haunts, some of our favorite restaurants and visited some family and, uh, yeah, it was great, but we just came back this, we got home at about like dinner time tonight. So I haven't, maybe my brain hasn't switched back into work mode. That's yet. okay. Nothing Here's but how, love for you, buddy. You're on it. Here's how I phrased the question. Who do you think the Oilers should want to face in round one of the playoffs? 106 votes. And we got uh, LA at 67% and Vegas at 32. So pretty mm. strong showing mm. for, for the, uh, on the stream people thinking that, uh, the Oilers should want I mean, they, to face the Kings. They did just beat LA pretty handily tonight, Strud. So it might have been skewed a little bit by tonight's result. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And and you know, I, I, there's another level. All these teams have another level when you get to the playoffs for sure. Dan says Vegas may end up being just what the Oilers need in round one, winning, gain confidence in themselves as a legit Cup contender. Um. Neil Garrett, I'm just going to go to this one. Uh, Neil Garrett, he says, uh, how is it that Doughty bitches to the refs constantly and they absolutely love him? <laughs> no, I, I don't necessarily 100% agree with that, but he is always talking to the refs and he doesn't look like he's got the, the kindest of things to say. I know he's like a veteran. He's well-respected, but do you guys, do you see that? Do you, do you feel that? Or maybe you have some inside struts from being out there. Yeah, he, he does talk to him. I remember when I played, I felt like Jeremy Roenick worked the refs all the time, and I would just lose it because he was always working them and bitching about this call or that call. And then as soon as you go over and say they'd be like, oh, you can't can't talk to me like that. I'm like, what about that guy? <laughs> Old JR Styles chirping you all the time. So, yeah, I could see where it gets frustrating. I didn't feel that tonight was an unfairly rough game, though. I think that that's a dangerous thing to think yeah but I, I i thought it was pretty even i don't know that you there was that bouchard cross check on yeah, buddy into the corner there like yeah, yeah it, it was both ways tonight i thought it was uh i thought that the refing was fine tonight mma terry I'm, I'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right but um he or she said i think we have playoff toughness against anyone actually and again that's you know after you see them playing a game like they did tonight you might feel that way do you agree with that, or who do you think is a is a team down the road that they're going to maybe strut? You know that they don't match up as well against in the toughness department. I think they match up pretty well against anybody. Struts. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think like Florida is a hard team to play against. Are they not? Pretty gritty. Yeah, they are. They're they're and you know this, we got to be careful because we we don't want the team to be made out to like a bunch of goons and, no, and that's all no, the way no. all the way they can that's win. Not the but, game. Yeah. Part part of the way that you do win is it by you know imposing your will on the other group, and that's by shift after shift for those that are built that way, being hard, being heavy, being physical, and so you're playing um, Dallas. You want to try to you know get some hits on Heskinen or on Robertson or Pavelski or whoever goes through goes you know make life hard for Chris Tanev, right? Mm -hmm. You know, for Fogel going after Chris Tanev, you know, Colorado, you want to try to get a McCarr and Taze. It's, it's hard to do it. And the problem was if you go and try to run a guy like McCarr, he sidesteps you and now he jumps up in the play and it's a five on four. So it's a really hard, that's a really hard thing to do, but you know, you, you, you get the point. A thing about that, uh, you know, uh, Edmonton, Florida would be fantastic. I would love to see it. But remember the job Evander Kane did on Matthew Chuck a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. Right? Good point. And that's yeah. the thing with Kane in the playoffs. And I think that's what I was – the point I should have made earlier is that that's what Kane can do, man. Like, he can – you know, sometimes teams just don't really have an answer for him. And when that's the case, like it was in that Calgary series, he can dramatically affect – Kind of the confidence in mojo, I think, in some ways of a team struds. Like it when you're sitting there on the bench and there's a guy that just blew up your veteran future Hall of Fame defenseman, and it's like hey, 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 you're looking around like eh, and nothing gets really done about it. I think that there's a toll that gets paid by a team for not taking care of some of its business. Someone has to address it in one way or another and, and honestly i'm looking at upl db like i'm telling you player luke dubois that's your chance that's your chance to to, to you know you light and scrap he doesn't that's not I, you gotta do you gotta do something good look who is it 
It's not yeah. Kempe. It's not Kopitar. It's Arbertson's too little. Kaliev doesn't play. Um, you know, Quinton Byfield, you're going to ask a 20, what is he, 21, 22? Yeah. To do that, like go through that lineup. Maybe, I guess the D man, I think England fights a bit. Yeah, uh, he had a good one there a little bit ago. So or... maybe that's the guy. Yeah. Um, but I mean, someone you have to at least go and talk to the guy or run him back. But today, like, Kane did what he wanted. He did, but he, and he'll just look at them and you could see him. Like he's looking at him like, you want it? You want it? I don't know how many times yeah. the camera cut to him. He's like, you want? Okay, well, what yeah. are we doing here? Why are you standing yeah. here? That like what? You know, and and I've heard him when he when the mics are around him. You, that's what he does. He's like, well, if you, I'm right here if you want it, and he forces guys to just continually say no to him. And I think that kind of can sap the spirit a little bit. But someone's got to call his bluff, right? So I'm not sorry. Yeah, there's no bluff. bluff. So sorry, not the bluff, but someone's got to call that bell. It. Yeah, someone's got to call it. So let's say you're playing against Vancouver Canucks, yeah. and you see that happening. Carson Soucy calling yeah. Car Carson Soucy. Carling, um, you know, uh, Dakota, is it Dakota Johnson? No. Yeah. Joshua. Yeah, I think so. Joshua. Joshua yeah. yeah. Thanks. Dakota you. Joshua calling him. Like you, you have to call, you need to call him out. Say, okay, I'll do this. I'm in. Let's do it. Yeah. Zuby. Uh, Penner's Pancake said, Kane and Perry rubbed off on McLeod tonight. He was throwing hits. I hope that Knobloch yeah. keeps the lines as is yeah. for a few games, do you think we'll see that, or is it going to be more tweaks back in yeah. the blender, or would you like to see it? He'll let her breathe for a bit here, Struds. He's getting results. Yeah, it needs stability. It needs stability, and I, that's a really good point by Penner's Pancakes. Uh, Zadorov, by the way, would be the guy answering the bell in Vancouver. Uh, yeah, yeah, Zadorov, another, but yeah. you, they have more guys. So I guess phys physicality wise. They do have some guys that can play that style of the game. Vancouver yeah. does, for sure. Um, Arthur Fonzarelli, the Fonz, here on the stream with us tonight, I think is the first first time he's uh, chimed awesome. in. He says, um, curious to get your take on who do you want out there at the end of the game with, with the empty net? He says, I like the big boys uh, just like everybody else, but they can make me nervous trying to get a game to the house. Do, or, or do those guys or do your leaders, even if they're not the best defensive players, just like have more skin in the game, you you trust them in that way. Who do you who would you guys want to see out there with Trust. that three to one with the empty net? Well, it feels like they 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 do go with Leon is is the guy out there and Connor. Then they you know Hyman's out there sometimes. Nuge we've seen him. I to be fair, I'd like to see some. I, the problem is the hybrid lines they haven't really played together. But you know, could you put um, new or uh, sorry Leon out there, Henrik? Also a smart player and Nuge. Like, is that too small of wingers? You know, that I I I want some guys that can win draws, but are also very smart and understand how to play in their own zone. Well, people might think, you know, defensive specialists, Ryan, uh, Jan Mark, those sorts of things. I want guys that have wicked, wicked good hands. I want guys that handle the puck well. You're gonna get one or two cracks at it. You're gonna have it on your stick under pressure at some point. I want the hands team out there in those moments, Struds, as much as you can. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. And then your D or who? Ekholm and Nurse? Yeah, I'm fine with those two. Yeah, two yeah, lefties, probably, whatever. I'm yeah. fine with Ekholm out there. I'm fine with Nurse yeah. out there. Depending on how his night has gone, right? Kulak, I think, would be okay out there, depending on how his night has gone. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely those two that you mentioned. Um, Neil Garrity said, am I the only one that thought CeCe had a good night? Are we not supposed to bring that up? <laughs> and he did get someone else. <laughs> someone else did. Uh, he had at least one person agree with him. I don't recall who it was. No, the D you... in this town are so polarizing. Hey, Struds, <laughs> like they're yeah, just people. all over the map. Yeah, no, I, I think he was, he, you know, he just, he just, I, I just wish he had a little bit more physicality to his game. Yeah. Um, so he not, was the one that was yeah. on the scene when Skinner was run into. He was the one that was right there yeah. on top of the guy when Skinner was run into. And he shoulder checked and saw there was a penalty. So we'll give him that. But certain things shouldn't matter. And I yeah. would have been completely fine with evening that up. It's a hard play, man. That's a hard play. I, I, I've i been in that position. It's hard. It's one nothing. Like, I personally, I know I heard Skinner's comments after, but he was kind of square- it hit him. He kind of bounced, stopped. Like, I didn't think he was starting. I thought he was trying to get a call um, in, in that moment. So it's it's just, it's a hard, that's a hard play right there. 
um, to just jump that guy and start thrashing See, on him. But it's not like CC shoved him into him. No, I like, know. I viewed that as that was the player not being in control of his own speed and momentum and going right into the goaltender, right? Skates first, right into the upper thigh and pads of your goalie. It was a dangerous play. And I don't know, man. I, you know, I talked about dry saddles retaliation. I would have been perfectly fine if Cody CC would have wasted one right there. That's your goalie. That's your starting playoff goaltender they're being careless with. I'd have been fine with him wasting one there. And to your point, like the whole team is getting – many of these players are getting more involved in this way. Many of them. But he did punch him. He punched him in the head. Hey, I'm a little, little shot. Yeah, but he gave him a punch. That's like, hey, man, like I, I thought that was – I. It's just hard at a one nothing game. Like everyone thinks it's so easy. It's going to start a brawl. It's it's not that easy, like to make that 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 play in that moment. Yeah, no, I I understand what you're saying. Um, Mike Smith said, "Could you imagine if the Oil could win the division and McDavid wins the Art Ross?" Uh, you guys talked about the division a little bit. Just just for fun, let's handicap it. Those are both. The Oilers would have to come from behind. McDavid would have to come from behind. Give a percentage of what you think the likelihood of winning the division. And uh, and Connor winning the Art Ross, or or both, or maybe just give one percentage on the likelihood of both happening. Oh boy, that's that's a lot of math you just threw at us. That <laughs> yeah, is a just, lot of math that just take it any way you I'm, take it any direction you want. If there's a hundred pieces of pie, I'm gonna say that ninety five percent, ninety five percent of those pies are going to Connor winning the the scoring race. Okay, only five percent of those pies are going to him or to the team finishing first in the Pacific. Well, there's only a hundred pies and you got to div- divvy up the percentages between the yeah, two like Place the pies where you want. Where do you want the pies put? Well, I only have a hundred pies. That's not fair. <laughs> what if I think both are 70% chance? I need 140 pies. Why well, are I'm you just, being I so could, stingy with the pies? Because I'm just telling you what's more likely. I believe it's 95 to five, the chance of of that over, over one. Wanna, okay, I'll, okay, I'll try it your way. Uh, okay, let me think. Winning the division, I would say is... 15 and yeah 85 and 15 i will say although i yeah so i guess it does kind of work yeah okay so then, you two more buddy oh you're splitting them okay that's fine i don't want to go too deep into the steiner matt you guys probably if you guys watch wrestling when you're young you might young pardon me you might not know what steiner math is that'll be you guys can look that up later it's a good clip um okay i'm gonna get right <clears throat> on that at 12 28 yeah. when yeah. we wrap up tonight. no you're gonna yeah. want to do it tonight for sure um <laughs> jcd 780 said i know there's <laughs> stick blade curve rules in the nhl but is there a rule for how big a blade can be? Dry Saddles is cartoonishly bigger than everyone else's. LOL. Right. Are, is there? Are there? There must be some restriction on sizing of <laughs> blades. I don't know. Blades? I mean, you... if there is, he's he's got to be right up against it. I, I don't know the rule. So, and I I mean, I'm not sure. I'm going to go f- rifling through. Yeah. It's pretty obscene, though. I would say that if it was illegal, someone would call them on it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's actually illegal curves anymore. Are yeah, there? isn't it? Yeah, you can do it. I, I think I'm not gone I, I, from the game. Well, they never get caught. Certainly, nobody ever tries to nah, call it anymore. I I might be wrong. I thought that they were removed. I might be wrong. And honestly, I, I'm not. I'm not combing through the NHL rule book nightly, so I, I could be on. But I'm I'm pretty sure that there is a limit. Like I think there's a certain length your stick can be. You know, Maximum his- length from heel to the end of shaft yeah, must not exceed 63 inches. But That's nothing, for the length of your stick. Nothing yeah, on height. Nothing on the, whole thing. Yeah. Nothing on the blade. Yeah. yeah so uh, that, that mean, was a quick Google search. That's about yeah. all I'm willing to Taves do. Taves Sakane says no illegal curves anymore. So yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that part. I trust him. Okay. Uh, I want to do two quickly. Oh, wait a minute. 12.5 inches from the heel to the end of the blade. Yeah. Oh, wait. That's Hockey Canada. Well, maybe, (laughs) whatever. Move on. All right. Um, uh, Blacklisted Maynard Nugent Spivey. He's asked this more than once. So this is just kind of a fanboy question, but I'll I'll throw it out for you guys. He says, does Connor Brown do the Oilers a solid and re-sign at another league min deal next year? And I mean, because what, I mean, what else is, how much is there going to be out there for him? Otherwise, I I don't think he's going to get a deal like he got this year. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I honestly, let's see how the playoffs go. I have no idea. I, I really, if he rattles off, I mean, I thought he almost scored tonight. If he, let's say he rattles off seven goals between now and what we hope to be ending in June, does it change things? Hmm. Probably. 
So I, I think he's worth more than seven or fifty grand, but he's not worth the four million, right? He's somewhere, somewhere there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm interested in what Dylan Holloway might be able to bring. I'm interested in what Raphael Lavoie might be able to bring. Uh, at some point, the Oilers are going to have to get some players on more entry level style deals, contributing meaningfully on their roster. They don't have a lot of that, and they need some of it, especially with the contracts that they got to get done. Was that okay, it? We got one more, buddy. Last quick thing, just for fun. Uh, the top. I don't know if you guys are you guys familiar with Yacht Rock, the Yacht Rock like playlist on Spotify. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm familiar. Okay, so the question really? was, what What's your favorite? They, it came up, and we were asking, "What's your favorite Yacht Rock song?" And someone, Neil Garrity, Never very early this. in the pod, also out of nowhere, asked, "What's your favorite ABBA song, Struddy?" So go either. What you no. guys can go either way on that. And I'll say for me, the Yacht Rock song that came to mind for me was um, "Summer Breeze." And that just, that was the one that popped into my head. And that's mm. to me, pure yacht rock, but maybe you guys have an answer Summer to it. Breeze. So I'm not going to ruin Summer this because this is actually a, yeah, that's it. Sorry. It's good. I just, <laughs> I actually have a future, uh, Strud's world re regarding yacht rock. So I'm not oh, going to wow. go too far down this whole thing, but ABBA, uh, there's so many good songs, but dancing probably Queens up there, man. Yeah. But Waterloo is a classic that mm. night. At Waterloo, Napoleon did surrender. Classic. So, I, I, but I will be talking yacht rock in the future because it is. Oh, it is, excellent. Yeah. Oh my Zuby, gosh, that's going to keep you people. Want, sing the one you wanted, Zuby. What was that? So, one? Seals and Cross. Summer breeze makes me feel fine. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember that. Yeah. And my ABBA song is I actually love. I've always loved Fernando. I thought that, that's one of my favorites. And a little lesser known one, two for the price of one. Do you know that song, Streds? Abba song, kind of lesser known. Know it's really cool. It's interesting. Okay. Okay, I'll dial mm. it up. Dial it up tonight. As I'm also looking at that Steiner math. Steiner math. Yeah, mm. I'll I'll find that for you guys. I'll put it in our chat. Little uh, little mango lead blanket tonight, Struddy. <laughs> what? Little mango lead blanket tonight. You know, little little shipwreck mango. Oh, I already had it. I had it prior to the show. Oh yeah. Okay. You, you know what I mean, lead blanket, right? That's the puts you to sleep. Like it's the nice heavy oh, no, blanket, just that. as you. You never heard that? <laughs> no. no. So you've heard that, right? I have, yes. Okay. I've heard of the lead blanket. I, I, I hadn't thought of it in terms of uh, your your uh, your drinks yeah. helping you get off to La La Land, but. Oh. I, I I drink to have fun, not to put myself to sleep, Chagra. <laughs> it, so it can be two things. Thoughts. It can be two things. Yeah. always enjoy responsibly okay guys good job tonight bit of a long one but uh that was a big win so had to talk about it uh gem of the night almost forgot struds well it, it came at the last minute hearing uh our good friend zuby mm. uh, singing summer breeze a song summer that breeze. Probably none of us probably want to hear in the first place but uh <laughs> actually doing a pretty good job that wasn't bad zuby can you sing Zuby, are you, like, I are can you sing a little bit. Sing? I hadn't planned on singing Summer Breeze tonight. It's not one of my karaoke go-tos, but I was yeah. happy to to just bust out the chorus there. For, it's a, they got Sealed a falsetto. Cross. I had to I had to put it in my range, of course. In fairness, you didn't have time to warm up either, which which is critical to any good vocal performance is quality warm-up struds. You know that from your karaoke career. If you haven't properly warmed up the organ, you're not going to perform up to the highest of standards that you set for yourself. All right, that was the yep. secondary jam of the night that just happened right there, <laughs> right then and there. That'll wrap up the podcast. Big thanks to our title sponsor, Sherwood Buick GMC, and all of our sponsors and partners here on the podcast. And thank you to you for staying up late with us, joining a little hockey talk. Uh, we'll be back Saturday after the game against the Anaheim Ducks. Have yourselves a fantastic uh, holiday Friday and look forward to talking again soon. Good night, guys. Thanks. Good night, guys. See you, buds.